welcome back to the second video of the chapter physical features of india as i said this video consists of peninsula plateau the indian desert the coastal plains and the island groups now let us go in detail with the peninsula plateau you can see the peninsula plateau this particular region is the peninsula plateau this particular region is a peninsula plateau the major features of the peninsula plateau are it is a table land composed of old crystalline igneous and metamorphic rocks and this central this is formed due to the breaking and drifting of the gondwana land and it has broad and shallow valleys and has rounded hills and it consists of that is a peninsula plateau consists of central highlands and deccan plateau that is the whole peninsula plateau is divided into two that is the central highlands here and we have the deccan plateau here i just it's a flow chart where it speaks about peninsula plateau is divided into two central highlands and the deccan plateau and central highland is again divided into malwa plateau and chhota nagpur plateau then deccan plateau is divided into western ghats eastern ghats see peninsula plateau this is the northern most part this particular region that is the peninsula plateau then here we have the deccan plateau then the peninsula plateau is divided into two malwa plateau this particular region is they say this one malwa plateau and chhota nagpur plateau so here we have the malwa plateau and this particular region we have the chhota nagpur plateau and the deccan plateau the deccan plateau is divided into two the western ghats and the eastern ghats this is the western ghats and this is the eastern ghats okay so this is the flow chart of uh, the division of peninsula plateau now let us go to the features of central highlands the part of the peninsula plateau which is lying to the north of the narmada river which is covering the major area of the malwa plateau is known as the central highlands see as i told you this particular part is the central highlands here we have the narmada river the north of the narmada river and which is bounded by the aravalli is here and the vindhya range here the second feature is this particular central highland is bounded by vindhyas on the you know vindhya range is bounded by the central highlands in the south and the aravalli is in the northwest then this particular region is drained by four important rivers that is chambal and sindh betwa and khen these are the four important rivers that is draining central highlands then central highlands are wider in the west and narrower in the east so you can see here it is broad here you have it is very narrow on the eastern side then we have the east eastward extension of this plateau the eastward extension of this plateau is known as bundelkhand and bandelkhand or it is also known as bandelkhand next let us go to the main features of deccan plateau as i said see this is the deccan plateau this particular triangular mass that lies in the south of the river narmada as i said 
see this is the Narmada river on top of the northern part of Narmada river we have the central highlands and the south of the Narmada river we have the Deccan plateau and the Satpura range flanks its broad base in the north while the Mahadev forms in the eastern part. Here we have the Satpura range this part and here we have the Mahadev on the eastern part and an extension of the plateau is also visible in the northeast which is no locally it is known as Meghalaya, Karbi Anglong plateau and north Kachar hills that is we can see the northward northeast extension that is the Deccan plateau's extension we can see on the northeastern side that is this particular part where it is known as the Meghalaya, Karbi Anglon plateau and north Kachar hills. Then it is separated by a fault from Chota Nagpur plateau that is this particular region Chota Nagpur plateau. Three prominent hill ranges from the west to east are the Garo, Khasi and Jaintia hills. So we have the continuation here towards this part where we have the Garo, Khasi and the Jaintia hills. So these are the important features of the Deccan plateau. Then as I said Deccan plateau is again it has got two edges or it is divided into two the western ghats and the eastern ghats the two edges of the deccan plateau are the western ghats and the eastern ghats now this is that is the western ghats western ghats are the high, are higher than the eastern ghats and their height is 900 to 1600 meters but what about the eastern guards eastern guards are lower than the western guards and their height is 600 to 900 meters the second one is anamudi that is it uh, is the highest peak of the western guards anamudi is the highest peak of the western guards so what about the eastern ghats we have Mahendragiri is the highest peak of the eastern ghats. The third point is they have steep slopes that is western ghats have steep slopes as height increases from north to south. What about eastern ghats they have gentle slopes eastern ghats have very gentle slopes. Then the fourth point of western ghats are it is continuous and can be crossed only through passes only that is it the people can pass through the passes only that is uh, the fourth point of the western guards so what about eastern guards eastern guards are discontinuous it is irregular and dissected by rivers then the fifth point of the western ghats that is western ghats are having tropical evergreen forest eastern ghats have scrub vegetation due to overgrazing so these are the important points of the of difference between uh, the western ghats and the eastern ghats now let us go to the next physiographic division that is the Indian desert the Indian desert or it is also known as the Thar desert so you can see the Thar desert you can see this part above the Ravali this is the Rajasthan region that is what the main Indian desert or it is also known as the Thar desert so this lies that is it is it is it lies towards the western margin of the Aravali range, western part of the Aravali range. And it is undulating sandy plain with covered with sand dunes. We are aware a lot of sand dunes, loose sands. So if, the, if there is uh, you know, uh, uh, high breeze, the high, then there is a tendency to form sand dunes. 
then this region receives very little rainfall that is below 150 millimeter per year so it, it has very scanty rainfall and it has since it has uh, very low rainfall it has arid climate with low vegetation cover and Luni is the only large river in this particular region and also we find you know crescent shaped dunes crescent shaped dunes is also known as burchens burchens okay i repeat it is also the crescent shaped dunes is one of the prominent uh, thing which is found in the thar desert it is also known as burchens so you can see here i repeat this is thar desert it is in the western part of the aravalli region and uh, it is undulating it is an undulating sandy plain and we know that it receives only very little rainfall so since it is it receives only little rainfall the climate is arid so very less vegetation cover and another important feature is it has got uh, a, a large river known as Loni and they have uh, crescent shaped dunes that is called burchens okay i shall show you this on the next slide see river loni you can see this is the rajasthan area or the thar desert where we have the river loni okay then as i said about the most important prominent feature of rajasthan is the uh, crescent shaped dune or it is known as burchen now let us go to the next uh, part or the next important feature which is the coastal plains when we talk about the coastal plains you can see this pink colored region this is the coastal region when we talk about the coastal region the indian coastal uh, plains are divided into western coastal plain and eastern coastal plain i repeat the coastal plains of india is divided into two the western as well as the eastern coastal plain and the western coastal plain is the, which is on the side of arabian sea and the eastern is in the bay of bengal here we have the bay of bengal here we have the arabian sea i repeat the indian coastal plain is divided into two western eastern western is beside arabian sea eastern is in the beside bay of bengal now the western coastal plain is again divided into konkan kannad plain and malabar coast konkan when you talk about konkan it is from mumbai till goa we call it as konkan then from goa till this particular region this karnataka region we call it as kannad then from here from this particular region till the end we call it as the uh, malabar coast so the western coastal plain is divided into three the konkan coast the kannad and the malabar coast then we have the eastern coastal plain the eastern coastal plain is divided into northern sarkar and coromandel coast we have the northern sarkar and the coromandel coast okay so the eastern coastal plain is divided it is in uh, beside bay of bengal and it is divided into two the northern sarkar and the coromandel coast and some other important features of this particular uh, region that is in the coastal region that is the eastern part is the there are three uh, important rivers in fact there are four important rivers which is draining this particular region that is we have uh, mahanadi then we have godavari krishna and kaveri these are the four important rivers draining the eastern uh, coastal region then we have the lake chilika 
which is an important feature along the eastern coast we have lake chilika here this part can you see this particular region that is called lake chilika so these are the important uh, features of uh, uh, the coastal plains now let us go to the next physio uh, physiographic division that is the island groups when we talk about the island groups we have two island groups one we have lakshadweep and the next one andaman and nicobar island lakshadweep is this particular island group is in arabian sea and andaman and nicobar is in bay of bengal now when you talk let's go deeper into the lakshadweep that is the island groups which is in the arabian sea lying close to the malabar coast of kerala in arabian sea yeah this particular region near the malabar coast in arabian sea we have the lakshadweep and it composed of small coral islands it has many coral islands then earlier this lakshadweep is known as lakhadweep minikoy and amindai and these are the it is known by these three names very early it was also known as lakhadweep minikoy and amindai these are the three names which is given to lakshadweep very many years ago and it covers this particular lakshadweep area it covers uh, an area of 32 square kilometer and the you know kavarati its main headquarters administrative headquarters is kavarati so these are the important uh, important things that you got to know with respect to lakshadweep islands see now see i can i will show you some of the one one of the important island in lakshadweep it has got beautiful sceneries likewise they have few of them then as i said about the coral reef you can see the corals here so all these things are found in the lakshadweep area which is also a tourist spot now let us go to the next island that is andaman and nicobar islands you can see andaman as i said andaman and nicobar islands lies on the in, in the bay of bengal it is a chain of islands see chain of islands it is an elong, elongated chain of islands located in bay of bengal and the entire group of this island is divided into two andaman nicobar andaman islands nicobar islands i repeat this whole chain of uh, islands is divided into two andaman in the north and nicobar in the south and these islands is close to the equator thus it experience equatorial climate and has thick forest cover so these are the important things important uh, uh, in points which is related to andaman and nicobar islands i shall so show you some of the island groups of andaman and nicobar islands this is one of the andaman nicobar this is also one of the islands and you can see here some of the other island groups of andaman and nicobar islands i hope uh, it is clear uh, you might have you have understood the second session of the video and before i conclude i would like to discuss some questions with respect to uh the second video the questions are the features of peninsula plateau the features of peninsula plateau then we have the second uh question that is explain the five features of central highlands third one write any five features of deccan plateau deccan plateau then we have the difference between right the difference between western ghats and eastern ghats then we have write a short note on the indian desert or the thar desert then we have write a short note on the coastal plains of india then we have a short note on the island groups next slide is about the 
notebook questions there are four questions which i have given you which you will have to write in the notebook make sure to write neatly okay the first question is explain the theory of plate tectonics second one is classify himalayas on the basis of region from west to east next the third one is classify the northern plains on the basis of the relief features and the fourth point is uh, sorry the fourth question is write the difference between western ghats and eastern ghats these are the four important uh, questions that you got to write in the notebook okay then the next slide tells you about the assignment questions which you are all aware you have got to write the assignment questions in the a4 size sheet okay which must have a cover page writing the name of the chapter and uh, the date your name class roll number everything you got to write in the first page then in the next page you can write down these questions the first question is write the three parallel ranges of himalayas in its longitudinal extent write the three parallel ranges of himalayas in its longitudinal extent number 2 explain peninsula plateau highlighting its broader definition explain peninsula plateau highlighting its broader division this is the end of the chapter i hope it is it was clear and thank you and have a great day